Stone Brothers Production. This is about five serial killers in Alaska for my video series about serial killers throughout the United States A through Z. So let's begin and I hope you enjoy the video. Number five, Thomas Richard Bunday. There's not much I can find on his early life, but he was a tech sergeant in the United States Air Force stationed at Eelson Air Force Base in Alaska. Bunday murdered five women including one 11 year old girl while stationed at the Air Force Base in Alaska. He told police that it was not all of them. Thomas Richard Bunday was not able to escape police for long. He had been transferred to Wichita Falls, Texas, but an hour after a warrant for his arrest had been issued, he took the coward's way out and committed suicide by plowing his motorcycle head-on into a truck. He died March 15, 1983. This was the first successful use of psychological profiling of killers in Alaska occurred when it uh, allowed the police to thin down their search for the murderer of five Fairbanks area women between 1979 and 1981. Number 4. James Dale Ritchie James Ritchie wasn't always meant out to be a serial killer. Ritchie grew up in a Wonder Park neighborhood of Anchorage, Alaska. He attended East Anchorage High School where he was a notable standout athlete having played in the 1994 state championship football and basketball teams alongside future professional athletes Trajan Landon and Moy Tosi. He was a relatively smart young man, being recruited by a West Virginia University football team and left for college, after which he fell out of contact with his family. By 1998, Richie was an active drug dealer and had used the street team Tiny over the following seven years, Richie was arrested multiple times, predominantly for drug-related offenses. He was arrested for the last time in Alaska in 2005 when he was apprehended while committing home invasion with plastic handcuffs and two handguns in his possession of the arrest. After serving two years in custody, Richie decided to reside in Alaska until 2013. Then he decided to move into his parents' place from 2013 to 2016 when he decided to travel back to Alaska after breaking up with his girlfriend in Virginia. After Richie has returned, he has not come back the same man. Richie committed his first two confirmed murders at the early morning hours of July 3rd, 2016 when he shot Brianna Fuisi and Jason Netter. The two bodies were discovered together along a bike path near Ship Creek by a bicyclist at 7.45 a.m. The third recorded murder took place 26 days later on July 29th, shortly after 3 a.m. Richie shot Bobby Thompson, who was a friend of Richie's son. Neighbors seen the face of Richie but could not identify who he was, though cops figured out the same murder weapon used on Brianna Foisi and Jason Netter. Finally, cops interviewed enough testimonies to identify Richie as a suspect. During the early hours of August 28th, Richie shot dead 34-year-old Kevin Turner and 25-year-old Brian D. Husson in the Valley of Moon Park. An undisclosed female passerby who was walking through the park discovered Des Husson's body along the trail at 1.42 a.m. Shortly after arriving, police discovered Turner's bullet-riddled body under the pavilion in the park. At this point, cops knew who the killer was because of the same gun was used at the scene. Mayor Ethan Berkowitz hosted a press conference that addressed the gang violence, though refusing to acknowledge the evidence leading towards the serial killer theory. The FBI offered $10,000 reward leading to apprehension of Richie for Thompson's murder, while refusing to comment on any connection to other murders. Due to that concern, acknowledging that a weapon tying all crimes together would run the risk of prompting the killer to dispose of it. The joint APD and FBI task force subsequently received upwards of 175 tips over the following two months, none of which pertain to Richie. James Dale Richie was spotted walking down the street at 4.30 a.m. Salo pulled up alongside Richie and asked if he had spotted the crime. Richie continued walking, prompting Salo to repeat the question over his megaphone. Officer Salo was shot four times, damaging his liver, bones, and intestines, while Sergeant Mark Patsky returned fire and killed Richie with a number of gunshot wounds. Officer Salo luckily survived his internal injuries with four hours of surgery. 
On April 26, 2017, Anchorage Police Department announces sufficient probability cause was determined to confirm that Richie was solely responsible for all five murders. Number three, Israel Keyes. Keyes was an American criminal who confessed to being a serial killer, rapist, arsonist, burglar, and bank robber. Keyes was born in Richmond, Utah, but resided in Alaska later on in life after serving in the U.S. Army from 1998 to 2000. He started to construct a business in 2007 in Alaska labeled under his name Keyes Construction, working as a handyman, contractor, and construction worker. Keyes was awaiting a federal trial in the rape and strangulation murder of 18-year-old Samantha Kongnig, who was abducted in February 2012 from the Anchorage coffee stand where she worked. He also committed over seven counts verified up to 11 unidentified. He also rummaged through 30 houses or more throughout his escape as a, he spent a lot of money on prostitutes and drugs. He also stashed murder kits around locations of his victims' houses and his own he saved up for. In the end, he tried to hold ransom for the coffee barista body to, by taking a picture to make her look alive for $30,000. Keyes was arrested in Texas after using Koenig's debit card, which he had previously used in New Mexico and Arizona. Keyes was subsequently extradited to Alaska, where he confessed to Koenig's murder. He was indicted in the case, and his trial was scheduled to begin in March 2013. While being held in jail at an Anchorage Correctional Complex on suspicion of murder, he committed suicide on December 2, 2012 via self-inflicted wrist cuts and strangulation. Number 2. Robert Christian Hansen, aka The Alaska's Serial Killer Robert Hansen was smart yet sadistic in his ways and yet knows how to get out of situations. He would hide by way of flight while hiding his victims, mainly women, in random remote locations where he hunts and has fun killing his victims. He was born in Iowa from his father, whom was a baker, and taught him everything about the trade. He was shy and has had issues with women at his young age. Later on in his life, he had gone through a few marriages because of going off the deep end and creating arson and burning down a school bus garage because of personal biases. He served 20 months and was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and was on medication while in prison, and he was not made to continue medication. After his release, he tried cleaning up his act by learning to hunt and fly and found a new wife to marry. He was charged with rape though in 1972 and served a short time again due to good behavior. He then started his rampage upon women of the prostitute side and an exotic dancing side. He disguised himself and had his own persona as a photographer or some kind of profession to take an interested victim down to a dangerous path. First being Sherry Morrow, an exotic dancer who was reported missing earlier, reported by her boyfriend. A 223 bullet casing from Robert Hansen's rifle that the police did not know around this time. He would drive them out to the dense forests of Alaska and hunt them down like a game. That of a deer, for instance. In 1979, the police were finally catching on that they had a serial killer on the loose. Woman was being found, stabbed and shot all throughout the forests of Alaska, where Alaskans used to find bodies from amateur hunters. They are not used to seeing stabbed and shot victims. In the end, Robert Hansen was caught and charged with 17 to 21 bodies. Some being found and others still lost out in the barrens of Alaska's dense forest. The Alaskan serial killer pled guilty to 17 victims, some bodies being found, and 30 rapes were brought upon the jury. Hansen served over 31 years and died at the age of 75 in 2014 due to undisclosed lingering health conditions. Number 1. Unknown Serial Killer in Craig, Alaska This is no normal story. At first they thought John Kenneth Peel was found guilt but the tides turned when they found evidence of Peel being on another ship docked in his workplace. Ted Smith, who was related to five of those slain, I don't say it should have been Peel, but it should have been somebody. Now let's talk about how this all took place in the victims. Victims of unknown killings were investors Skipper, Mark, Colster, Mark Colstert's wife, Irene, two Colstert's children, and four teenage crew members. The Colterts were from Blaine, Washington, and three of the crew members were from Blaine, Bellingham area. A fishing boat was found burning with all victims were shot aboard the 58-foot vessel. 
They tried convicting John Peel twice because of close ties with the vessels and occupants. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and comment and share for more videos coming soon. We post one to two Maya videos weekly and one to two A through Z state serial killer series weekly or bi-weekly, so stay tuned. Also, leave me some suggestions on what we can improve in other videos for future videos. If you want to read more on the stories, check out the description below for the references to each serial killer listed and talked about in this episode. I put the previous video in the outro just in case if you missed the first episode of this video series. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.